In this media visit video, we meet the Nodaway Valley FFA chapter. From a student who has integrated her SAE into an elementary school classroom to their Ag in the Classroom program, they really focus on agricultural education. There's even a student that educates high schoolers through their informational broadcast over the school TV program. We also see their hydroponic system and of course, hear about the advisor making all of this possible. Let's check it out. With Ag in the Classroom, we are here to teach the kids about Ag because even though we live in an Ag-based community, not many of them actually know what agriculture is or the different aspects of it. So while we're here, we take one topic specifically, as today we learned about chickens, and we teach them everything that we could possibly think of, where I taught the students about eggs and the protein in them, the parts of the egg, where an egg comes from, and then others will teach them about the shapes and sizes of eggs, and others will teach them what a chicken eats to help produce their egg. Well, I pretty much just help teach the younger kids how much egg we use throughout the day, and just make sure they know where stuff comes from, and just help teach them a little bit about it. Ag for All started about, I want to say, five years ago. And of course, I wasn't in high school or SFA five years ago. However, my family is very ag-based in this community. And so I was quickly immersed into this organization through working at it at the 4th of July, where we have all sorts of kids from Messina, Greenfield, Fontenelle, Bridgewater, and all of our surrounding areas. They come in and they go through this place, kind of like how we did today, where we learned about chickens and eggs but they learn about soybeans and corn and beef and horses and goats and just all the different types of agriculture on a lower education level. Probably just seeing all the kids and watching them get excited about doing the stuff we're doing. Helping with Ag in the Classroom, whether it's in the classroom or the Ag for All organization during the summer, has really taught me that agriculture is one of my biggest passions and I really want to help spread the word and get people more educated on what ag is, what farmers really do, and what we're about overall, instead of sharing the myths and everything in ag that people shouldn't know. So this is our hydroponic system. Uh, down here we have our water reservoir with a pump in it. And the pump then sends the water up the sides here. And you can't really see it. But down here in the corners of it, you can see where the water does come up in the pipes. And then it comes up into the trays and the trays float. And in here we have our lettuce in here. And we have our lights up here and our control panel up here, which controls the light, the time that the light is on, and the water temperature. So with our hydroponic system, we have to test the water and make sure that the pH level is low enough for it. So the pH level for regular water is 7, and the pH needed pH levels needed to grow lettuce are like five and a half to six and a half. So in class we're learning how to keep the pH levels down. Um, and also we have to learn how to adjust the pH levels for different crops that we're growing in there. We got them for our foods class and our FFA project to grow our own foods to use in our foods class. Our FCS teacher helped us write the grant and then we went to SWIC and presented it to a couple of people. Basically we just had to talk about why we should get them and why we deserve them and what we would use them for. My favorite part was learning about how to grow our own foods and how, to, how we can utilize them in a different class. So I'm in our NVTV class and a part of that this year we thought it'd be a good idea just to inform the kids about you know, it's an agriculture school. Most of the people are involved with agriculture. So just kind of take a closer look at it, I guess, for some of the kids that aren't. And so we go out to our farm. We do little clips on, like, we just did one on calving and just little information that they can learn real quick in five minutes or whatever. Throughout the rest of the interview are some different clips from Ryan's segment.
Welcome back to another episode of Ranch with Ryan. I'm Ryan. Uh, we call it Ranch with Ryan, just as it's kind of cool to slide off the tongue, nice and everything. We'll just kind of think of what we want to base the episode off of, and then me and my uh, partner Clay will put it, put a script together, and then we'll go out and record it in front of with either the cows or some type of background out there and then we'll bring it back, put it on a computer and edit it, I'll edit it down to the like minute and a half to two minutes that goes in the news. I think a lot of people already knew that I was involved with agriculture and had the farm and all this. I think that the main thing is that people didn't realize how many cattle we had and some of the people that didn't really know me, like the freshmen and stuff, will, after a episode plays on the news, they'll come up to me afterwards in flex or whatever and just talk to me about it and stuff like that. I think it's just kind of cool for them to see like a different side of life because I guess, you know, where I've grown up with only agriculture, I don't really see their side, so it'd be kind of cool to see what they think and kind of how I'm looking in on them, they're looking in on what we're doing. I kind of like it because it has really helped me get better with computers. I wasn't very good with computers and now that I'm in a class that is pretty much all about computers, it's helped me to edit the videos by myself and do all this and yeah, it's really helped me. I knew I was going to go into agriculture, but now definitely the beef side of agriculture. Poultry has kind of always been a passion of mine since I got started with 4-H and FFA. And they're more easier, they're smaller, they're not quite as intimidating to the kids. Um, and I thought that they, the incubating experience is always one that is new every single time you go through it. We just wanted to get the incubator in there to get kids involved with it because a lot of kids are from the city and they don't know about the agricultural side of things. Uh, we had to coordinate with one of the teachers that taught the first grade and then make sure it was okay with her that we bring it in and plan it out so that we knew where it was going and time it so it would hatch during FFA week. I had to come in every couple days so I could talk with the kids about what's going on, what's developing, what the chicks are looking like right now. The last three years we had Blake Anderson, he moved down to Southwest Valley. Uh, he was really helpful, helped me with a lot of things, uh, not just in FFA but how to become a better person. Um, and Miss Wilkins transitioning in, um, kind of the same thing there, just there for all the kids, helps you become a better person, a better FFA member. It definitely got me involved a lot more than I was last year. I guess she just taught me to like, I don't know, I can do it. She really helped me get out of my comfort zone and do things I wouldn't normally do. I've had two advisors and both of them have been awesome advisors and they just help guide me and teach me how to become a better leader and get more involved in FFA. Miss Wilkins, this is her first year here, so she is definitely like just joined in right in. She felt like she didn't seem like new. She really just hopped right in with us and she's pushed me to become better and like so this is my first time doing a contest with her, so she's pushed me to become better and doing chapter website. My advisor has always helped me explore new things and get out of my comfort zone. My first advisor actually helped me, he helped me find my passion for agriculture and helped me figure out what I want to do in FFA and help push me into it. And my new current advisor, she has really supported me along the way and has told me that she'll support me no matter what. As she's a newer teacher and she keeps kind of calling us like our guinea pigs and so, but we're both learning this alongside each other and she has helped me in numerous ways by taking me to a Teach Ag conference to help me figure out if I want to do ag education in my future or not. 